closest land I would reach would be about 2,000 statute miles away, 1,800 nautical miles away. And at the pace that a raft would drift, it would be basically as if you got down on all fours and crawled to Colorado. I had a few pounds of food, I had eight pints of water, enough to survive for about eight days, which wasn't enough to get me even to the shipping lanes. Unfortunately, I was able to kind of focus on being functional and not give way to all the fear that I had also at the same time. It was really tough. Um, in the morning, I would get up, I would still do my exercises as best I could and whatnot, but I was in a very weakened state. Uh, by the afternoon, it was very, very hot, and I called it the afternoon bake-off. And it was that all I could do just to stay conscious and tend to my solar stills and get a little bit of water. If I fell asleep, then the solar stills would deflate and salt water would leach into the fresh water and it was like checking off more days of my life. So it was very critical that I stay awake. And then finally the sun would go down and I would be looking out at this opening to the raft. It's like my picture window. I'd be facing the sunset and it was just beautiful. And I would, uh, I would say, well, okay, I made it to that. That wasn't so bad. Maybe I can do that again. Not only finding out that we're all stronger than we think we are, that we're more resilient, but also learning what our weaknesses are. I was a failure at lots of things in my life. I was a failure at business. I was a failure at, at relationships. I was a failure at a lot of things. And getting through this gave me a chance to come back and create a new life. But things still happen. And even though we can't control what happens to us, what we can control is how we face it and what we do with it. And everything makes a difference.